listening to this podcast. Do me a favor and head over to the tcpnetwork.com. TCP, or The Culture Professional, is Pennsylvania's first digital platform to highlight the voices of disenfranchised groups. With 13 podcasts and counting, there's something for everyone. Entertainment a la carte is what we like to say. Again, that's the tcpnetwork.com and The Culture Professional on Facebook. TCP, it's a movement, not a moment. My name is Dana Hamp Gulick. I am a candidate for the 96th House District, and this is my story. Born here in Lancaster, um, I went to Manheim Township High School. I went to the University of Pittsburgh, where I earned two bachelor's degrees, in one in German language and one in communications. Um, and then I started my career in marketing. People should vote for me because I'm going to bring the, the bold moves and the vocal advocacy and the willingness to really be strategic and to push on pushable places and pull on the pullable ones. I'm gonna do the work that I think is not being done in this district right now. Most important is that I am a single mother to a 17-year-old daughter. I am a caregiver to my aging mother and I serve on the board of two local nonprofits that help families in crisis. 2022 brings us a brand new district in the 96 that has been redrawn and we have an opportunity to send two Democrats from Lancaster County to Harrisburg for the very first time ever. There has been the same representative here for 30 years and a lot has changed in 30 years. Uh, the world has changed drastically since my opponent was first elected. And I think now is the time to replace somebody who is comfortable and out of touch with somebody who is hungry and passionate and, and wants to do this work. I'm going to focus on raising the minimum wage immediately so that families can work 40 hours a week and afford a place to live. Everybody Every family should be safe, healthy, and thriving. And I think I'm the, the person for that at this time. My name is Dana Hamp Gulick. I'm candidate for State House in the new 96th District, and I approve this message. Love it, love it. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Reset with Rev Sherry, hosted by me, Minister Nye. I am so grateful to be here today. I thank God for the opportunity, and I thank Rev Sherry, a mentor of mine, for extending this opportunity to me. If ever there is a time, the time is now to reset your minds. Reset means to change, to adjust, to shift, to transform, to transition, to transform again, I'll say, to correct, as well as renew. We are Christ-centered. We inspire. We encourage. We empower. You will be stretched. Yes, you will. You will be inspired again. You will be tra changed and transformed. That's what I want to be today, transformed more into the image of Christ. I am so grateful to be here again to talk to you, and I hope many of you will talk to me. Again, my name is Minister Nye. I am a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am a wife of, I think, about 18 years. I am a boy mom of three. I am an educator of about 18 years. My goodness, and school is almost out. So you know I am excited. The topic today is the journey. Somehow, some way, I got to this title, from proclamation to destination, let's pray. How great you are, God, to allow this time to even be. I am grateful to be on this journey called life. I pray, God, that what you have placed upon my heart would speak to someone today, that they would know you even more and be inspired to do what they've been called to do. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to try my best not to speak 
too quickly, but I am just so, 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 so excited today. Like I said, I'm inspired. I'm inspired by my Lord and Savior, whom I call the Almighty. I'm inspired by the one who is called the beloved of the Father. In fact, the Father said, this is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. I'm inspired by the Christ, the Christos, the anointed one of God, the one who's dudamous in power, supernatural, that is, he is the emulsifier of all emulsifiers, the one who can bring a holy God and sinful man back together. Again, I am inspired to, about the one, or I'm inspired by the one who is a friend to me, a friend to the friendless, a father to the fatherless, the goat, I call him the greatest of all times. His name is Jesus. I'm inspired. And somehow, some way, I got over to being inspired by Viola Davis. Yes, I said Viola Davis, an American actress. In fact, the first American actress to achieve a triple crown of achievement. She was named by Time Magazine as one of the 100 most influential people in the world in 2012 as well as 2017. She was interviewed just recently, I believe it was recently, at least I just viewed the interview, by Oprah Winfrey. The interview can be found on Netflix. I might read her book. I've had an aversion to reading after graduate school, but I do believe I will read her book or listen to it on audio called Finding Me. I'm inspired by Viola Davis. And y'all, I don't want you to judge me, but I am also inspired by the childhood book, The Little Engine That Could. Yes, yes, yes. Let's not think we can't pull some good nuggets from childhood books. This book that I'm reflecting on right now in my life has sold over a million copies. And there are 20 different variations of it. Don't sleep on childhood books. I think I spoke about um, Oh, the Places Will Go by Dr. Seuss last time because God is taking me as well as you some places. The scripture that God placed on my heart this time around is Philippians 4.13, and it goes like this. And then we're going to delve into what God has placed on my heart. Is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nope, nope, nope. All things are not profitable for me to do. But yes, what he's called me to do and you to do, we can do. Not in, of, in and of our own strength, but in the strength of God. Now that I got all that out, I want you to pause and invite someone. Please invite your mom, your auntie, your cousin, and all whom you connect with. In fact, invite those you don't even connect with. Just start sharing on Facebook or wherever you are, whichever platform you're on. Because I want to talk to you about the journey. God has me on a journey. And the title of this particular message is From Proclamation to Destination. I don't know if I'll get to destination, but my goodness, we're going to talk about proclamation today and the very important impact of the proclamation. My goodness. So here we go. The journey. I do believe when I spoke about the journey uh, maybe about a month ago, I told you that I was in devotion. And when I was in devotion, I came across some videos and some um, scriptures and so on that was published by Christ Church Oak Brook. So I don't want to take credit for what I'm about to read as I speak about what a journey is. Here it is. A journey is purposeful. It is intentional. In fact, as I shared the last time, it is met with great intentionality versus movement that merely involves meandering in the woods on a great campground with beautiful scenery just looking around. Instead, it has a destination to which everything else builds upon. As I stated before, if you view this a couple of weeks ago, on this journey, which is likened unto a hike, there will be twists and turns, ups and downs, hills and valleys. And no, I don't like valleys, but there are lessons in them. 
There are going to be times when you are exhausted, when you are tired, and times when we are able to rest. I'm not talking about sleep. I'm talking about rest, when the mind is really turned off and you wake up and you're revived, right? Truth is this. We may find ourselves on this journey feeling lost and looking for the trail, tempted to turn away. Do not turn away. Do not give up. And it is in those times when we will be relying on the gear in our backpack, our spiritual maps, our Bibles, our internal compass, the Holy Spirit, and prayers, not only our own, but the prayers of our grandmom, our mom, our great-grandmom, our ancestors that we don't even know about. And we will use these tools to find our way back to the path. When we are tired, and starting to drag, we will welcome the support and encouragement of friends that have come along with us on this journey. They will push us along the way. Good friends will challenge us. They will not allow us to sit in our mess and not reach for the goal. Mm -mm -mm. They will push us along the way and encourage us to keep on walking. And we will fully rely on the good, good shepherd who knows best. And together, we will get up and walk boldly, boldly into the unknown because there are times when we won't see clearly where we're going, but we're going to keep on walking. Even though we have never been there before, we will eagerly anticipate, eagerly anticipate a stunning grandeur because we know that we've been called to do something. We have not just been created just because. The journey is likened unto a hike with God you can do this, and I can do this. So here we go. How did I get to this journey part two from proclamation to destination? I don't know how I got here, but I have been in prayer about the journey that I am on, and I am ready to jump, jump into spaces that are unfamiliar to me. So maybe that's why God has me here. So let's talk about a proclamation just for a moment. A proclamation is a public or official announcement, especially one dealing with a matter of great importance. It is a clear declaration of something, a formal or explicit statement, or again, an announcement. Let's look at the word explicit. State it clearly and in detail, leaving no room for confusion or doubt. It's black or white, no gray. No gray in this proclamation. It's when we get to the place that we know that we know that we know that we know that this is the thing that we've been called to do. And even when someone is here and someone is here, we're not moved by what people are saying, but we, because we have been called to do a thing. No gray. Development in it, yes, but no gray as in you have to deviate to this place outside of what you've been called to do. And we proclaim, this is all about proclamation. It, it, so check this out. On, when we proclaim that thing we've been called to do, it's a matter of speaking it first to ourselves because God has spoken it to us and then we can publicly speak it to others. Look, I remember when I was um, about 18 years old and I was dating someone and this person said to me, look, he ran game on me. Don't tell anyone, I can smile about this now, don't tell anyone that we're dating because, you know, our relationship is like a fetus. And if it's exposed too soon, it will die. That was game. He was keeping me on the low. But check this out today. I guess this is what I do know. You got to know what you've been called to do because if you expose it too soon, anyone can come along and cause you to think differently. Snatch that dream, that desire that God has given you right out of your heart. So when you make this proclamation, when you declare what you're supposed to do, you declare it with boldness when you know that you know that you know. Not that game that that brother ran on me. I am reminded here of this. We have to be very, very careful. Proverbs 18.21 reads like this. My brothers and my sisters, life and death is in the power of the tongue. 
Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So we want to be reminded that it's important for us to speak life over what we've been called to do. Proclamation. Proclamation. So here we go, my brothers. I know I keep saying here we go because God has me at a place where here I go. And I'm so excited about what's happening. I believe this about a journey. I believe this. I believe the journey begins before the proclamation. We just don't realize it. But everything that has been done before we proclaim can be used as we journey along in a positive way to impact people's lives as well as our own. So we must boldly and explicitly state our why. I want to go down to here. This, is, this whole proclamation um, part of this uh, message comes from Luke 4.18. And in my study, I wake up early and I tend to jump into the word of God because I need the word of God. I do. It is in Luke 4, 18. Listen to what Christ said at a young age. I believe our young people have been called to do some things. And sometimes we need to, if not oftentimes, we need to listen to them. Check out this proclamation. Christ at a young age is standing in the synagogue before religious leaders and so on, the big wigs and so on. And he says this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed. This is what the young Christ is saying, boldly saying, and people are like astonished. They're taken back. He's not stuttering over anything. He's standing up with great authority in speaking what he's been called to do. This is his proclamation. He's saying, here I am, am whether you like it or not. Here I am, whether you understand or not. Here I am. Somebody needs to get this. I'm getting this now. And I've been on this journey too long, and I'm just getting a little bit more over time. We need to get to the place when we know that we know that we know that God has called us to a place that we stand up in the presence of whomever respectfully and boldly declare, this is what I've been called to do. That's what he did. We want to stop waiting in the background for some human being to say, now is your time. Mm -mm. We want to stop sitting in the waiting room, waiting for someone to come along and bring us out of that place to give us this in that position. And I'm not talking about going in and kicking in the door and being disrespectful. No, 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 no. God will open up pathways for you and for me so that we can stand up and declare what we're supposed to do and do it. Christ did this. My goodness, he stood before prominent big wigs and he declared what his call was. And you and I can do the same thing in a place of humility. Yes, we can. Now watch what happened here. Remember, Christ is my inspiration. Then I'm going to go over to um, Viola Davis as well. And Luke 2, 48 through 49, check out what was stated. Luke 2, 48 through 49. When his parents saw him, because he was out of their sight, he was, they were already journeying, journeying away from Jerusalem. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us this way? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. They could not find the Christ. No judgment. I have lost one child before. It goes on at 49 and says this, why were, Christ says this, why were you searching for me? He asked, didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? And there are versions that say I got to be about my father's business. Wait, what? I had to process that just a little bit. Christ said that to his parents, but his parents questioned as well. Christ is in a synagogue standing up proclaiming what he has been called to do. His parents can't find him. He's standing before people and they're astonished and they don't know. This young Christ did this. So here's what I I wrote down. Truth one, everyone won't understand the call on your life. 
no judgment. His mom just didn't get it. His earthly father didn't get it at the time. But for us today, as we stand up and proclaim what the call is and we move about navigating spaces, operating in our call, we have to understand that everyone will not understand the call that's on our lives. They won't get it. <laughs> They'll shake their heads, possibly. They'll say, wait, what? For real? My goodness. But we have to know that we know that we know that we know that we know that we've been called to do some things, created with great purpose. Even those closest to us might not get it. Even when we tell them what we are doing, they may not get it, but just maybe it's not for them to get it at the time. They're not trying to be disrespectful. They're not trying to move us outside of the will of God. They're not trying to do that. They just don't know and don't get it. So at first, Christ's mom actually took it kind of personally. She says this, son, why have you treated us like this, like he did it intentionally? And Jesus went on to state this, didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? I got business to take care of. I got to begin to operate in my call. I have to first proclaim it because he didn't go on to work the miracles and so on that we know about at that particular time. That was just when he was proclaiming what was prophesied. So truth one, even when you proclaim what you have been called to do, even when I proclaim what I have been called to do, some people might not understand. Let's not take it personal, even if it seems like they're taking it personal. Let's pray and continue to operate as we are supposed to. Truth two, I am a mama. So I just want to tell every young person, if you're listening, be mindful of what you say to your elders. I had to step back and, um, and, and reread what Christ said to his mama, be careful how you speak to your elders. And I have some elders as well. So I, I still, if I'm being corrected and so on, I try my hardest to just bite my tongue. I should still wear a mask because that would help me out as well. If I would have said what Christ said, if I would have said that to my pops or my grandma or auntie and so on, my stepmom didn't do, she, she didn't whoop me. But I probably would have been stuck in my room. But there was something about the young Christ still declaring, even in the place of, in the face of his parents, not being disrespectful. Don't you know, I have to be in my father's house. That is powerful. Powerful. All right, truth three, truth three before I move on to Viola Davis. Tell the truth and shame the devil. No matter how uncomfortable you may be as you begin to stand up and proclaim what you have been called to do and people may not understand and people may take it personal, you tell the truth. You declare, you proclaim the truth. And this is what Christ did. He said, don't you know, I have to be in my father's house, paraphrase. I got to be about my father's business. Jesus knew y'all and in our knowing what we've been called to do we go through many trials and tribulations but we go through differently in our knowing what our foundation is what we've been called to do we may weeble but we don't fall down unless we're bowing down to pray we stay the course as he did he was lied on he was ridiculed he was spit upon he was pierced he died but he died knowing that he came with an intentional purpose and we have to know that when we've been called yeah and we know we stay the course so yes very much so on this journey and I have my cup right here called the journey one of my students gave it to me so I know this is a whole nother level for me on this journey called life as I do what I've been called to do let's stay the course let's stay the course 
All right, now, how did I get over to Viola Davis? I watched her interview, and I have to tell you that I am inspired by this sister. She went through a lot, and she didn't proclaim very early on in her life what she was called to do, but when it clicked, it clicked. And she moved beyond her circumstances. She moved beyond her hurt. She moved outside of the box of poverty. She moved outside of the box of what bullying did to her. She moved outside of the box of. This sister was in poverty. In fact, she said to Oprah Winfrey, I was po. Po. She didn't say poor. And Oprah Winfrey actually said, oh, no, no. Oprah was like, I was poor, but you were po. Like she was at a whole nother level and I know I grew up poor. I sure did. I enjoyed those biscuits with some honey on it. If my Aaron is watching, we used to make up those biscuits and we ate those biscuits like it was, uh, I mean, turkey and macaroni and so on. You ate what you could get. I got to school so that I could eat. So I'm inspired by this sister here. She faced racism. She faced, I mean, abusive. She lived in an abusive environment. And when you live in environments like that, oh my goodness, the trauma of that. But she lived beyond. And she was transparent when she said this, my brothers and my sisters, I could not see it with my own eyes. She couldn't see outside of the box she was in at one point in time. She said, I could not touch it. So I had to believe it. I love it. I could not see it with my own eyes. I could not touch it, but I had to believe it. Okay, Sister Viola, I like that. At the age of 14, she knew she did want to be an act actress. She wanted to be. And we need to let our young people know that at a young age, they can know what they want to do. They can. Some people just, I didn't know until I was like 25 years old, maybe 27. I don't know. But she knew at 14 years old she wanted to be an actress. She knew that she wanted to do something different than what she was exposed to. Here I am reminded of Helen Keller who said this. Powerful. You know Helen Keller. She was blind. She was mute and so on. Helen Keller said this, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight with no vision. Okay, Viola, okay, Helen Keller. The only thing worse than being blind is having sight with no vision. We have so many people walking around able to physically see, we can, like we can see, but we have no vision of what's before us. Some people don't have any vision of what they've been exposed to. And I have lived that life, and I'm grateful that I'm outside of the box today. Viola, she said she had to believe it, even when she couldn't see it. But at some point, she began to see, and that was powerful. She began to have vision of what could be. Oh, uh, y'all got to watch the video. Y'all got to watch the interview. She and Oprah are engaged in this beautiful conversation that is very much inspiring. Viola goes on to say this, my dreams are bigger than my fear. I need to dream like I needed food and water. To dream, to have vision, to have it. She wanted to dream more than dream like she needed food and water and you know we need food and water like I need water right now. I do? Okay, Viola. She went on to say this, and please do watch this interview. She is very, very inspiring, and so is Oprah Winfrey. She went through various trials as well, and she is not where people thought she would be, I am sure. Viola says this, failures and hardships are interesting learning tools. Think about that, because I really don't like failures, and I really don't like hardships, but I know every 
failure that I've gone through and every hardship has brought me to this place that I'm in right now. So it's being used in a positive way. Failures and hardships are interesting learning tools. And this quote is very profound as we proclaim what we've been called to do. Because when you proclaim what you've been called to do, someone actually just said, the enemy roams to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. He comes up hot and heavy. So we take those temptations and those, those, those things that cause us to like, you know, cringe. And we use them as learning tools, but we don't stop on this journey. Okay, Viola, I'm inspired by you, my sister. I want to read another quote. This one here. This quote here, here she is, and she's wrestling with the call that's on her life. And she's like, okay, I don't have the money to do this, and I can't, I don't see how I'm going to do this. Remember, we can't always see it, but that vision is very, very important. So she was toying with the idea of being a teacher. I was a teacher, but it wasn't her call. And her sister, you know we need those sister friends and those family friends that come alongside us, and they're like, wait, what? No. You need to do this. This is what you've been called to do. They begin to proclaim it for us. So her sister came along like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And some of us are at a place where we need to say, what am I doing? This is not what I've been called to do. And I can't lie. When I fell that day on teaching test multiple times, I went home and told my husband that I'm going to be a hairstylist. And I love hairstylists and need my hair done now. Look, but it wasn't my call. And he was like, no, you're going to be a teacher. So I had to get a tutor and so on. I passed the test, and yes, 18 years later. So here Viola is grappling with the call that's on her life to be this phenomenal actress that she is, but she can't really capture how she's going to get there. My goodness, that's a whole other story. And settling for being a teacher, which wasn't her call. So here's what she said. It says this. She knew fear was not going anywhere. She grappled with the maybe and finally came to this conclusion. And this is a conclusion that many of us need to come to. Dang, gone it. It's worth the try. Dang, gone it. I don't know where I remember saying dang, gone it years ago. Dang, gone it. It's worth the try. Why not try? Why live in the what ifs of life? I don't want to live in the woulda, coulda, shouldas. I want to try. I want to jump. I want to be free in what I've been called to do. And if I fail, let's fail forward, right? So she proclaimed right here. She said, look, dang, going it, it's worth the try. My brothers and my sisters, it is well worth the try. It is worth it. And if we've been called to do a thing, we need to do it. Now is what we have. We have to seize the moment. I know I'm not the only one. I know many people are grappling with the call that's on their life, and they have opposition. You have opposition coming up against you. Everyone won't understand. And we don't even have to be mad at those who don't get it. We don't have to be mad at those who don't allow us to sit at the table. We don't have to be mad. And if we are, allow our anger not to cause us to fall into sin, but to fuel us even more to go for it. Proclamation. Dang, going it, it's worth the try. Well, I'm at a place where I'm trying a little bit more. How many of you are at that place where you are trying just a little bit more to do what you've been called to do. I really want to talk about this book giveaway at some point. I just want to let you know, if anybody's out there, we're going to be giving away a book. And I do, hey, should I? In fact, let me just pause for a second and talk about, can I talk about this real quick? Yes, thank you very much. I want to pause for a second because I can ramble on and on, and there might be some mommies out there, and you need to take your little babies that are between the age of one and six on a little date. Well, check this out. Busy Bodies Play Cafe at Rockville is open for you. You can take your little baby right on over there, 
and you can enjoy time in a safe place. You know, you got those little buffers because babies can fall over. It's a beautiful place to take your young one. I believe mommy dates are very, very important for our children. I'll tell you what it's called again. Busy Bodies Play Cafe at Rockville. Now, my boy is eight years old, so I can't take him. But if you have a baby between the age of one and six, take your baby over. Especially, it's cold out there now. It's cold. I don't know if the weather's going to change, but I thought I would share that real quick before I move on down again. We're talking about proclamation to destination. And what I found out, my brothers and my sisters, when we proclaim what we've been called to do, it changes how we navigate as we're getting to our destination. When you know what you've been called to do, and even if you can't see the end result, the way we navigate through the ups and downs, we always go back to what we proclaim that we've been called to do. So you begin to take the hits a little bit differently. You get up even when you want to lay down and rest just a little bit. Even when you feel like throwing in the towel, somehow, someway, God allows you and helps you to get up to continue to navigate. So here my sister Viola said, dang, going it. It's worth the try. How many of you are ready to try? Why not? Just why not? If I can be very transparent right now, and I have three boys, and I'm always encouraging them to try. Try the next sport. Try to D up against that person that's about two feet bigger than you. Try to dribble this way and that way and so on. Try the honors courses and so on. Mm -mm -mm. I need to practice what I preach, which what I, I, I mean I do, but there are times when I find myself pushing other people harder than I'm pushing myself. Why not try? Bring a young person in the house and begin to inspire them. You wind up inspiring yourself. So here we go. She did not move into teaching. She moved into her call, the arena of acting, and she is extremely profound and a phenomenal actress. Now, I told you that I had one more um, inspiring uh, part of this whole conversation. Don't judge me. Please don't judge me. Um, but I am very much inspired by the childhood book, The Little Engine That Could. Don't sleep on the childhood books. Read them to your kids. I'm telling you, you can pull out some nuggets. Y'all know about this. Dad. You know about that train. That little train, that red train, sometimes the simplest things can really get us to understand what we're supposed to do. So, yes, I am really talking about the little engine that could. I went from talking about being inspired by my creator. I went from talking about him to speaking about Viola. Eat the meat and spit out the bones. There are so many people we can stand before that will inspire us. And I am now talking about the little engine that could. I read the book years ago and have not really picked, I have not picked it up, but I did listen to it on audio. And I'm reminded that oftentimes we think we can, we think we can, we think we can, and that's okay to think we can do something that we've been called to do. But when we get to the place that we know we can, my goodness, that little red engine knew exactly what she was supposed to do. She was supposed to get those toys and that food over to the other side to those children. The proclamation was clear. The call was clear. And the reality is when God calls us to something, he never tells us it's going to be easy. In fact, the word of God says in this world, you will have tribulations. You will have troubles. But we got to remember we're not alone on this journey. So here you have the little engine who is now facing some difficulty. Something happened with the engine. And a train cannot get to the destination alone. So here this little engine is stopping this animal and that animal and this and that. 
and everybody's giving that little engine a no. That little engine, that red engine, could have turned around, threw in a towel of surrender, and walked away from the car. And that little engine would have been very sad on the inside, and those children as well would have been sad. See, our call isn't just for us. It's not. It's for others as well. It is so important that we operate in the call that is upon our lives. I am getting this more and more. It's not just for me. It's not even just for my family, for me to do the thing that God has called me to do. It's for so many other people. So check it. I'm inspired by this little engine. I don't know how many knows because I didn't count them that that little red engine got, but that little red engine kept asking and asking and asking, don't you dare turn away at the first no, the second no, the third no. We only step down when God tells us to. So now the little blue engine comes along and that little blue engine is ready to help. God will send forth the help that you need to get you where he's calling you to be. I am a living testimony of it. My goodness, if I share that I sat down for how many years? And there is something powerful about sitting down, but not throwing in the towel. So this blue engine actually carried the load ultimately to get the little red engine to its destination where those children were blessed. What am I saying? I know God has me on a journey. And it was confirmed when that little boy walked into my office, his mama brought me um, a snack on his birthday. It was that little boy's birthday and his mother brought me a snack. And when the little kid, this, this third grade student, handed me this cup right here, which I wish it had some coffee in it. It says, enjoy the journey. It was confirmed in my spirit that now is the time for me to move forward on this journey that I've been proclaiming. I mean, God told me years ago what I was supposed to be doing. And this here just confirms it. God will speak to us in different ways. So, so it, oh, we got a caller. All right. Talk to me. You, oh, we got a caller. All right, talk to me. Oh, yes, I am enjoying this so much. And I love the fact that you um, talked about the childhood books because all those things you learn as a child from one to six in kindergarten mm -hmm. it is absolutely wonderful. You are doing a wonderful, wonderful job. I am loving your presentation. Amen. Yes, those childhood books have a lot of nuggets in them that we can be inspired by. I am so grateful you called in. Be in. Yes. All right. I want you to stay on the line. We're going to get your information because we have a book for you. In fact, can I just. Yes. Yes. Do not get off this line. The book is called Love Takes Time. My goodness. I believe you are going to enjoy it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. May God bless you. God bless you as well, sister. Yes. Oh, that was just such a wonderful blessing. Again, if you have any comments or if you want to call in, please do call in. And I'm so grateful. We are going to give our sister this book right here. Love takes time. It sure does. Loving ourselves takes time. Yes, it does. I am grateful that my sister actually appreciated the book. Do not shun those <laughs> childhood books. I'm going to be reading more and more to my eight-year-old that needs to increase his fluency. Look, my brothers and my sisters, don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give up. And don't sleep on a call that's on your life. Now is what we have. You have to seize the moment. I mean, take hold of the moment. I'm reminded right now of this, um, and check this out, it should be online. Steve Harvey spoke about jumping. 
If Steve Harvey didn't jump out of what he was in and to what he was called to do, he wouldn't be a phenomenal um, comedian today. I mean, he is a good comedian. He says some stuff, but he is a good comedian. He talks about sleeping in his car and doors being closed in his face. And he's like, jump. Now, that wouldn't encourage you to jump without the leading of God. I'm reminded of Peter right now. So proclamation to destination, there are times when we're going to have to jump into those uncharted territories. Peter got out the boat, the boat that he was familiar with, and he began to be a water walker. Not by himself, but he was walking towards the Christ. And guess what? Yes, he fell in. Yes, he got scared of what was around him, the wind and so on. But he got out and he prayed a profound, heartfelt prayer. Paraphrase, Lord, help. We got to move out of these spaces that we're comfortable with. We have to proclaim and declare what the call is on our lives. We have to. And from that proclamation to the destination, whatever that place is you're supposed to get to, know that there will be ups and downs, right? But don't be moved when you know, unless you're moved into the presence of God to talk to him a little bit more for clearer direction. I actually want to thank you. I'm not quite done, but I want to make sure that I um, talk to you about Felicia Martin's event. This event here, um, I want you to check out. If I can find it, I will find it. Yes, I will. Felicia Martin, is a fun, she has her own shop. And let me get it right here. I really want you guys to um, check her out. So it's extreme, the Extreme Beauty Shop, the Extreme Beauty Supplies, Wigs and Wishes. We understand that many people have medical conditions, alopecia. Some people are going through cancer, and not only women, but men go through various um, conditions, and they lose their hair, not only on their head, but we're talking about their eyebrows and so on. And God has gifted people like Felicia, as well as others, to be a blessing to brothers and sisters. So please do check out this event. I'm going to read this. Extreme Beauty Supply, Wigs and Wishes, right? Silent auction event. Medical hair loss fundraiser. So we're talking about a medical hair loss fundraiser. It will be Saturday, May 7th. That's Saturday, May 7th. And it is going to take place at 1240 Green Springs Drive, York, PA, 1240 Green Springs Drive, York, PA, 17402. The start time is 930 a.m. The end time is 630 p.m. To become a sponsor, call 717 327-8708. I'll say it again. To become a sponsor, there are people that need to be sponsored. My goodness, it's a phenomenal event. Call 717-327-8708. Felicia. Felicia Martin, we salute you for what you are doing. I pray that this event blows your mind. I mean, I know you have the vision. I pray that God takes it above and beyond what he's allowing you to do and what you are seeing. This is a blessing. All right, my brothers and my sisters, from proclamation to destination, I am here to encourage you, for we all stand to be encouraged. You be encouraged on this journey called life. You own the call that's on your life. You move in it. You operate in it. And you do it with boldness as Christ did. He stood up before people that thought he shouldn't stand up at such a young age. People who couldn't understand the call that was on his life, yet he stood up. You stand up up my brothers and my sisters if you are fearing doing so fear it and still do it fear is mentioned over 300 plus times in the bible so it's real but i'm gonna tell you this god has not given us the spirit of fear so if he didn't give it to us we gotta wonder where it comes from but fear can be used to propel us, you do know that, to the place we need to be. It won't paralyze us. It's going to push us into our destiny even more. 
Proclaim the thing that you are called to do and operate in it under the leading of the Holy Spirit. I'm thankful that I was able to do this today. I want you to check me out on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Every, well, every now and again, I forget to do it. I can't lie. But what I do is something called Monday Memory Weekly Meditation. Some years ago, God made it very clear that I could not be conformed to the ways of this world, but I had to be ye transformed by the renewing of my mind. And in the effort to do so, I have to study the scriptures. I have to meditate on them. I have to memorize them. I do. A sister need help. My thinking be all over the place. So I do something called Monday Memory Weekly Meditation. It's when I give you one scripture a week, the one that God has given me, and we meditate on it. We work on memorizing it. We work on praying it in our daily prayer, praying God's word back to him. Okay? Also, you can try to hit me up on Facebook Every Monday, Tuesday, and pretty much Thursday, Friday, I put up a daily prayer. Prayer is highly important. It was Christ's custom to enter into prayer. And if he had to pray, my goodness, we have to pray just to make it today. That's a whole nother song that just came to mind. On Tuesday mornings, I'm so grateful that my pastor, Pastor Knight, at Brightside Church allows me and some women to come on to a prayer line. We've been doing this since the beginning of the pandemic, and it's a blessing to unite with women and pray in the name of Jesus. That's Tuesday at 7 a.m., Tuesday at 7 a.m. Hit me up on Facebook if you would like to join in and talk to the Lord. Well, it is 551. I don't know if there are any questions out there. I will quick remind you again, mommies, Busy Body Play Cafe at Rockville. Indoor playground party, space for children ages one through six. Mommy dates are important. You be encouraged. You be encouraged. I pray that you were able to get something out of this. Um, and if I can leave you with one more t thing detox. In fact, check out my videos on working out. Detox is a part of the whole workout regimen, how we are to stay fixed, fit right now. And I am doing a detox. And truth be told, as you are navigating this world and you're journeying from proclamation to declaration, it is highly important for you to detox. On a physical tip, like detoxing and entering into God's state, oh, entering into worship, when you're not feasting on those food, fasting and so on is highly important. But also detoxing from people, places, and things that would taint that which has been placed in your heart to do. So detox. I am so hungry, but I will not eat. Get in contact with Nye Hammond, Juicy Box. She has some awesome root detoxes that have been such a blessing to me on my health journey. I think that is about it. I want to thank you for joining me on this show, is Rev Sherry Show Reset. I'm just the host during this time, and I'm grateful that I've had the opportunity to share some hopefully encouraging words. I am not exactly sure what's to come, but I'm going to tell you this. Rev Sherry will have up the next event. You check out Facebook and other platforms. And may you be encouraged and inspired to keep on keeping on. Blessings and peace be upon you, my brothers and sisters, from proclamation to destination. Do what you've been called to do. Amen? Amen. I am. My name is Dana Hamp Gulick. I'm a candidate for the 96th House District, and this is my story. Born here in Lancaster, um, I went to Manon Township High School. I went to the University of Pittsburgh, where I earned two bachelor's degrees, in one in German language and one in communications.